Christy. So tithing is just yes. kind of, I can go back with Abraham and Melchizedek Dick and all of that. And, and if, you, if you won't study, it won't matter. But um, it's just uh, suggested retail price. <laughs> If you want to be blessed, cut that channel off. Don't let, he got his mega. Why is some of them mega people got their mega deals? They don't even care no more because they don't already milk their money. They don't already got their money. They could care less if they put another broadcast on. They already got their millions and trillions and got their jets and got their three different houses, one in New York, one in, B in Bar Bermuda, one in some town. And, and they can just sit before camera in their living room now. Here I come again today, and I'm going to teach. Why? Because somebody gave. I'm not knocking the giving. So if no one ever give another dime, as long as they're good money managers, they should be set for life. So you can afford to get and say, you don't have to give me another dime, another tithe. But here's what you should do. Give it all. See? And if you're not going to give 10%, you ain't never going to give it all. And some of us go all our Christian life and don't know what it's like to give 20% of our offering of our pay. Never know. Talking about how good God is and what he done. Don't know what it is to give 15% one pay. Don't know to give a tithe and then give a 5% increase. Yeah. Don't know what it is like income tax time. To, you just got your regular pay. Give him a tithe off of that. Then you got the big old lump income tax. Then give him a tithe off of that. And then, oh, that's too much money. Lord Jesus, oh, get, get the shakes on it. Don't know what it's like because there's something going on in the heart. You don't believe that God is not mocked. What sort of man sow it, that's silly. Yeah. God, in other words, says, like I tried to tell you, there's not one of my kids, not a one, who can ever tell you that they provided for me. Not one time. Did one of them give me some money one time because I couldn't make it to the bank or I'm going to give it back to you tomorrow because we out eating or something? Yeah, maybe. But ain't a one of them ever tell you that our daddy, we paid the rent. Our daddy, we paid the electric, the gas, the water cut out. We the one kept it going. We bought our daddy a car and paid the, the car no nothing. Not a one. Because that would mock me. And so God is saying, I'm not mocked. You will never outgive me. That's, that's the principle. Not that God is like saying, what, we use it again, whatever man so said, real, you, you going to reap what you sow? No, it was meant that God would say, you will never outgive me. My kids can never stand. I just seen my oldest son yesterday, and they can never say, I did this because you was, you wasn't, no, you can't, you're lying. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You never outgave me. You never provided more than I did. Never. And that's what God is saying, that if you provide for his work and for his kingdom, you will never outprovide more than him. And that's what people don't get. So once you learn that, you won't be sitting back counting, uh, did I give him too much? <sighs> Time to grow up. Okay. John 1, 29 34. Are you with me? Okay. The next day. John sees Jesus coming unto him, saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. John seeing Jesus coming unto him, saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. The message that John the Baptist preached was the message that Jesus would take the sins of the world away. This is he who I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And what John is preaching is about Jesus coming and bringing the kingdom of heaven. That's what John's message is about. He says, and I knew him not, verse 31, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I'm come baptizing with water. John baptized with water. 
John says, I bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and abode upon him. Now, John identified Jesus. John's message was, John the baptizer's message was, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. John introduced Jesus. Now, recently, I thought about it, uh, that there was a time when Billy Graham was America's preacher, and George W. Bush, Daddy Bush, introduced Billy Graham. Now, think about that. The President of the United States introduces a preacher. It's an honor to be introduced, you know, if you're preaching somewhere and, and there's a crowd of people and the person who introduces you. But think about it. A president introduces Billy Graham. So who is the greater honor, the president or Billy Graham? Billy Graham. John the Baptist. You know, we, we, we kind of come too familiar with old John in his old camel hair clothing. You know, he wasn't a slick dressed dude. You know, he, 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 the only uh, thing that John did was turn the people's hearts uh, 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 to, to baptism of repentance. There wasn't no, you know, great miracles like uh, Jesus came behind him. But he introduced Jesus, the king, the king of heaven. I mean, what a great honor. And he, his testimony was, I saw the spirit descend upon him. Verse 33, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now, there were two uh, baptizers walking around. One was the one that baptized you in water, and the other whom John introduced was the one that was going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. Right. Now, there are a lot of people. Let's go to Isaiah 40 and 3. There are a lot of people who are familiar with John the Baptist's ministry, which is to be baptized in water. Amen. You know, we got baptized in water. We became a Christian. They baptized me in water. I joined the church. But there are multitudes who have not become familiar with Jesus' ministry, which is to be baptized in the Spirit. Now, when I say baptized in the Spirit, here's where a lot of people check off because they're saying, is he going to say uh, uh, whether I speak in tongues or not? That's not where I'm going at this at this juncture. But a lot of people have been baptized in water, but have never been baptized in the Spirit. Because what they do, they get baptized in water and they join church. Yeah. Jesus didn't come for us to join church. He came preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's a difference between church and the kingdom of heaven. Most people who say they know Jesus are really People who are walking in, in church. They're, they're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Episcopalian, Lutheran, uh, Church of God, or whatever. They don't have a clue as to what the kingdom is. The kingdom of heaven. And I can prove that by saying this. That many people know this scripture, John chapter 10. That I am the door. By me. This is how you come in. But most people have spent their time, Minister Jones, looking at the door. That's their whole life. They're looking at the door. They were sinners. Somebody led them to the door. They went to the door. Jesus is the door. They know it's not Allah. They know it's not Buddha. They know it's not, you know, Hare Krishna, Baha'i faith or some weird deal. Jesus is the only way. And they spend their whole life looking at the door. But Jesus didn't want us to spend all our life looking at the door. He says, I am the door. I am the way. It's the Holy Spirit that comes to show you what's beyond the door. And most folk get caught at just getting to know the church. John baptized with water. 
The baptism of repentance. Everybody needs to be baptized of, uh, in repentance. Isaiah 40 and 3. It says, The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare thee the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So before the Lord can come, there has to be a change. Has to be a change of heart, change of mind, change of direction. There has to be a change of how you do things, how you think, attitude change. Even if you don't have the, the power to do it, you've got to have the, the serious want to. You know, if you're addicted to, uh, to uh, a heroin, uh, uh, shoot needles, you got to want to get off of the stuff. You can't get off of it if you own it, if you don't want to. So, you know, you don't have the power to get off of it, but you want to get up off of it. That in itself is repentance, even though people are saying, stop, stop, stop. And you're saying, but I can't, I can't, I can't. The fact that you want to is repentance. But the power that comes to help you break the habit is where the Holy Ghost, symbolically how the Holy Ghost comes. Amen. Repentance, everybody has to do. Amen. Amen. Look at Matthew. Turn back again to Matthew chapter 3. John's message. We want to look at John's message because, see, John's message is necessary today. Uh, Matthew chapter 3. John's message is necessary today. We are really preaching a lot of stuff in church that is beyond the comprehension of a lot of people. You know, a lot of stuff that tickles ears. A lot of stuff that uh, uh, it offends because people can't receive. Yeah. But in Matthew, what did I tell you? Matthew 3? Did I? Matthew 3 and 2 saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. That means it's here. You can reach out and touch it. Repent. You got to change. You just can't uh, 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 join the kingdom of heaven. You got to repent. You got to change. You got to change. A lot of churchgoers feel like uh, I don't have to repent. It's amazing that we're still waiting on the world to repent and God is waiting on us to repent. We act like Israel never had to repent. But God is calling on us to repent. He's calling on us to change. Amen. From, from the, your, your pastor to the, to, the, to the flower in the back to repent, to change. There's some area of, of your life that has to change. Repent, repent. If, if, if you got this much glory, if you want more glory, you're going to have to change somewhere. Something's got to give. You got a car that you can only get uh, uh, 80 miles an hour out at Tops. That means something's got to change. You got to go get a valve job or go get a something, but something got to change. You can't keep putting the pedal to the metal and kicking the car because you can only get 80 miles, 85 miles out of it. You got to get the pistons checked. You got to get an overhaul, engine overhaul. Got to get transmission done. You're going to have to put some work into it because it ain't going to get no better. It's going to diminish. Now your 80 going to turn into 50. Next thing you're going to hear, clunk, 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 on the side of the road, AAA, please come get me. Yeah. And many, many Christians are in that place. We don't want to change. We want the world to change. We want the people around us to change, but we're not willing to change. The message of the gospel, to, to walk in the kingdom of heaven, to continually to grow, is to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's at hand. It's available. Yeah. It's reachable. It's a growing kingdom. It's more of it. What church does says that you've got in here now, you're okay. It's us against them. And we have to be careful that we're not fami so familiar with the church environment that we fail to walk in the kingdom. So the message of the gospel that comes to every one of us, irregardless of how long we've been saved, whether our daddy was the pastor, like mine was. Whether you went to church all your life, like I did, and a lot of you. Whether you sang in the choir, like I did, and a lot of you. Whether you've been, done good deeds, like I did, and a lot of you. That's not the point. That's not whether you help little old ladies across the street. So what? Look at all the little old ladies you passed up. What about them? If you get points for helping them across the street, you get deductions for the ones that you... You didn't help. 
The gospel is about repenting and changing. When you pray, what do you want me to do, King Jesus? What do you need me to do? John introduced the king. A king has a kingdom. Why it's so difficult for us here in America? Because we used to uh, uh, a democracy. We, we, we can speak against you. We speak against authority. The Bible says that uh, they speak against dignities. It's one of the spirits of the enemy, how he works. We, they're not afraid to talk bad about dignities. And that's how we are. We don't like you. We don't care who you are. We'll say, he ain't God. We'll talk about everybody. But see, a king has a kingdom. And he has subjects. Yeah. Only with our king, everybody is a king. Mm -hmm. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yeah. And he's simply saying, acknowledge the fact that I'm the greatest king. And you can be a king under me. Right. But John came to introduce, here is a king. The king of heaven. It's at hand. And you have to repent. You have to change to get in. Now, the Pharisees... Uh, let's go to Matthew 3 and 7. It says, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said oh, oh, uh, unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruit, uh, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. What the Pharisees did, they didn't come to repent. They just came to see. A lot of people only come to church to see. They don't come to change. Check yourself. Why did you come? Why are you a part of a church? Why? Why? If you're a part of a church for any other reason than to change, you came for the wrong reason. The Pharisees, we fall in the category of a Pharisee. The Pharisees didn't come to change. They came to see. To see what? To see the choir, to see the preacher, to see somebody, to, to see if they, they actually did with the money what they said it was going to do. To see what they could talk about. But the whole reason to coming to the kingdom of heaven is to change. To see it, to bow down before it, to give the king glory because of it. The Pharisees, he says, and he called them a generation of vipers. That's why church people get mad when I preach sometimes. If I really let go, the Holy Ghost really take me because we want to be congratulated for being at church. Thank me for coming. Thank me for being here. If I wasn't here, there wouldn't be nobody here. You know, everybody else has left. I'll leave too. That's what the Pharisees do. And John called them you snakes. You serpents, you have another agenda. You're phony. You're not real. <laughs> and we can't handle that. You ain't real. You can, you're vain. Because they're saying Abraham is our father. That's the equivalent of us to saying uh, uh, God is my father. I'm saved. You're saved, but he's saying you don't want to change. And that's an offense to God. Yeah. All of us, when we say I'm saved, but I'm not going to change. I'm going to continue to do what I do. I don't need your advice about my money, about my health, about my life, about my living, about my relationship. I don't need your help. I can figure that out. If I get in trouble, I'll call you. My back's up against the wall, I'll call you. But I can do it myself. If it requires me to change, I'm not changing. Somebody else needs, oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. But that's the truth. Yeah. You can't say the kingdom of heaven is at hand and I'm going to stay the same. And that's why he called them a generation of vipers. He said, bring forth fruit, produce. That's why so many places are seeker friendly and they're swole with infection. Bring, bring forth fruit to prove that you're no longer living that way. Show it. Prove it. That ain't church, but it's kingdom. Church, it says, come one. He says, come ye all. Come. Come how? Sure, you come, but you bring fruit when you come. And the fruit is your heart to say, today I'm going to change. And the Bible says, the day you hear my voice. And that's not just for the person who's been out smoking crack all week. 
He was talking to the Pharisees. That's people who, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now, I done prayed and asked the Holy Ghost to speak. So if y'all afraid of him, y'all go ahead and be, because I'm going to obey him. He was talking to the Pharisees. Look at it. It's right there in your Bible, verse 9. And don't say within yourselves, we have Abraham, our father. We've been in church all our life. Our daddy was the pastor. I, I, I was I sing in the choir. I, I've been knowing God a long time. He says, save it. Save it. God's able to raise up children from these stones. God's able to take. Listen, let me tell you something. God's getting ready to bring in people who, who what the church don't look like church people. Don't look like a church lady. God love everybody. Yes. And this is no indictment. I don't have a tattoo on me. So I'm just going to be me. I'll preach me. And if I offend you, I don't mean to. But I'm going to tell the truth. I don't have one on me. I don't have an ear pierced or a hole like that anywhere. Those of you that do, you do. That's your generation. I don't have a picture of, of uh, Ron on me when I was trying to say I love you, Rhonda, but I ran out of money or none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Ron. <laughs> they check my debit card and say, man, you just got enough money for Ron. We, you want to say Rhonda, but you, you got to come back. <laughs> you know, I ain't got none of that. <laughs> but God got people that they got tattoos all the way up and them ones all the way up that we look at sometime in the grocery store. And we be, yo, come on, don't act crazy. You be like, what was you thinking? <laughs> I mean, they're coming all the way up to your, your nose, man. I mean, just all the way up, all the way down. You'd be like, I bet you if you had your clothes off, you'd look like a serpent, like a snake. Oh, you done been there before. You tried not to judge, but you was like, what was you thinking? And some of them, especially on people with real dark skin, you can't even read it. You know, you're like, what was you trying to say? You could have said that ink, navy blue ink on that skin, bro. What's that all about? And we, we almost look at him and say, ain't no hope for you. But God going to save people that don't look like you. Because he love everybody. And if he got to take like he took our brother David and put him in sackcloth and save two or three of them and put them out there, he'll do it. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. Because some of us that got, thank you, David, some of us that got clothes, we won't come out there dressed in our clothes. We got, God then gave us good money for these duds, but we won't put them on. Unless we go into the party to shake out, do our breakdown thing. But we've come to the house of God. We look like we broke as a joke. We didn't make coming to the house of God common now. I remember when we used to dress to come to the house of God. Every man wore a three-piece suit and a tie and had a scarf and had his shoes shine. You walked in the house of God, you laid your stuff out, the woman had her heels on, and y'all stepped off in here together. Now you come in, you got your holy holies on, got old raggedy t-shirt, coffee stuff. What's that all about? Call me old school because cause he do it. There was a time when we say, I'm going to my father's house. And then when they see us out eating after church, they could say, there goes some church people. Yeah. There goes some church. Now they see us look like we all just left the ballpark. Because yeah. we were trying to say, we go to church. We're part of the kingdom. Yeah. We didn't get so familiar thinking, well, if we dress like the world, the world will follow us. Did they? God done bless you with the best. You ought to wear the best. That's my opinion. Say that other stuff when you're going to birthday parties. Go on to mom and them house. But we'll come to God's house, get your best. Wear, wear your hat. Do Put your good shoes on. You're going to wear your good shoes over there with them bunch of drinkers and fornicators. <laughs> you ought to be jazzed up when you come in here. Fur coat with the, with the, with the animal right there that might bite you. <laughs> My mama and them, they had the, had the, the, the little 
Fox used to lay there, man, look at you. I was a little kid looking up at him all the time, man. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all don't know about that. We should. Because we kingdom. We're not to worship clothes. We're not to worship our cause. But if God gave it to you, wash it. Clean it. Full of McDonald cups and baby sip cups and diapers from last week and all that mess. What's that all about? You paying a car note on it. Smell like old socks. You ain't to worship it. But if God gave it to you, it's part of the kingdom. And then one more thing. Why ain't nobody ever in it but you? <laughs> Let me leave that alone. See, I know people back when I got say, Lord, they were catching the bus. If you give me a car, I'll bring people to church. Ain't nobody, you don't never... Maybe you hadn't noticed, but that's people at the bus stop. But you got a car. You don't notice that. You be looking at them down your nose, don't you? There are people at the bus stop. There are people walking, pushing carts. But you got a car. I don't say this to make you feel guilty. I'm saying you better quit being so familiar. And thank God for it. And sometime ask God if you can fill it. Let's have a praise break. Because some of us can't walk like we used to. 